When I started student teaching, I knew that I wanted to incorporate a lot more activities. I teach history and history gets a bad rap for being boring and super lecture based. And don't get me wrong, there are days that you need to do lecture. The very last day of class, we do reconstruction and it's kind of one of those things that I just need to wrap up. There isn't really much of an activity you can do when you're talking about rebuilding the South. Um, that being said, because my class moves so fast, I actually only have the kids for about 17 class periods, but two and a half hours per class period. There's a little bit more lecture than I probably would have thought. Um, there are activity heavy days, there are lecture heavy days, and I've really come to learn that you really need to have that balance, but that it can't just be, hey, I'm going to lecture and hope you take notes. Having interactive notes or um, a worksheet or something that corresponds to the lecture forces them to pay attention. It also gives them points for it. So that way they're not whole, their whole grade isn't based on an exam. Um, one of the pieces of technology, there's actually two that I've grown to really like with student teaching is Google Classroom. At least for grading purposes, it's very easy to have them turn in their assignments on Google Classroom. I don't have to worry about losing anything. They don't have to worry about losing anything. And it's very convenient. On the rare occasion, I do have them do a paper assignment in class, at least for my in-person students, because I do have half in-person and half online. Um, having it be an assignment in Google Classroom that they hit turned in on so I can grade it right away. Or giving me the papers and then right after I go through them and I enter grades within 24 hours makes it so much easier because then again, I don't have to worry if I lose something. They don't have to worry about losing anything. It makes it really easy. The other one is Edpuzzle, which I've talked about a lot in our discussion posts. And Edpuzzle is a great piece of uh, technology where you take a video off YouTube or Amazon or wherever it is you find it and you upload it to Edpuzzle um, via the hyperlink. And you can take the video and convert it into a, an interactive video that asks questions. And you can write the questions. Sometimes you find ones that teachers have already made that video. And you can watch it and see if you like it and then just copy it. Um, that doesn't always work, I've found. But it's really, really nice because for homework, the kids can sit with their computer. They can watch the video. And instead of having to answer questions on a worksheet that they then might lose, they can just answer the questions as they go. And it grades itself and then it goes into Google Classroom and then I can upload it into the grading program that I just love so much. Her voice dripping with sarcasm. But again, just having them be able to either do that in class, especially with my Zoom kids, if I need to show them a video so I can make sure that they're paying attention, I can also watch in real time to make sure that they're doing it. And if they're not doing it, I can be like, hey, why aren't you watching your video? It's fantastic. Um, in terms of um, bringing forth Christian values. The fact of the matter is we all just need to have compassion for our students. We don't always know what's going on at home. Sometimes we can see a quick little blurb, but at the end of the day, we don't know what it is they're going through. I've taken, especially this semester, to accepting late work through the end of the semester. I can't excuse them from everything. I can't give them an A if they don't turn anything in. I have had kids who didn't do anything all semester, and I can't really do much about that. But what I can do is if they are struggling, you know, giving them an extension. If they are, if they do need help, making sure that I'm available as a resource to help them. They're writing papers this week. Normally I would have their homework due the day before they come back to class. I'm giving them a whole extra day when I see them again, to make, so at the beginning of class, I can be like, all right, you guys had three days to work on this paper. It's not very long. It's not. It's like two pages. But you guys had three days to work on this paper. What questions do you have? Like, you have me right now. We have seven minutes blocked out for this. Hit me with your questions, and I will do my best to absolutely help you. So just having compassion and making sure that you're there for your students in a way that makes them feel comfortable coming to you and saying, hey, this is going on at home. I haven't had a lot of time. I had a student email me today and say, she's like, I haven't had a lot of time. And I was like, look, I emailed everybody to tell them what they were missing because I emailed everybody in my class yesterday who was missing assignments and said, hey, this is what I need from you. 
I was like, you weren't singled out. Don't worry. And it was like, and you have until June. You have a month to get them done. I just, I want you to be aware of what you're missing. And so number one, you don't fall further behind because if you see a long list, you don't want to be missing more and more assignments. But number two, this is what I need from you in order to boost your grade. It is, I can't give you points if you don't turn it in. Um, but thank you very much.